everybody and welcome to another episode of Adventures with Andy. Today we're going to dye yarn using lemon juice. Um, Chad was emptying out and was cleaning out the refrigerator the other day and found a couple of bottles of old lemon juice. I'm not sure how long they've been in there. Um, one of them technically expired about six months ago. The other one technically doesn't expire for about six months. Um, but with my OCD issues, I'm not comfortable using it for food. But it will still be good for dyeing yarn because as I mentioned in our Easter egg dyeing episode, you need three things for dyeing yarn. You need the yarn, a, uh, a, an animal protein source one uh, for using food dyes. You, you, you need the dye, which in our case is going to be some Wilton icing food color. Um, same stuff that we use for dyeing the Easter egg foot. And you need acid and lemon juice is acid. Um, I don't know how well it will work for dyeing yarn though. I'm just a little curious. And rather than just toss this in the garbage, you know, toss it out, I thought, eh, let's give it a shot. See what happens. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? Um, today, we're going to be using two skeins of yarn. I've got it soaking back here in some water. It's been soaking for about a half hour. I've got one skein of Dyer Supplier Two Ply Superwash Sock and one skein of Dyer Supplier Superwash Sport Merino. And for our heat source, again, we're going to be using our crock pot um, because it's not quite warm enough to do solar dyeing yet. It's only going to be in like the low 80s today, and I prefer it to be in the 90s for solar dyeing. So a few more weeks yet on that. Um, and we are going to be dip dyeing this yarn just to see what happens. So let me get the yarn out of that water and I can start mixing up our dye bath in the crock pot and then we can go. Okay, so water's warm, not hot. And I'm gonna start with putting in, and start with this one. There's less in it. This is a half a teaspoon measure, so two, three, four, five, six. Uh oh. That's three and a quarter, and that bottle's empty. And let's open it. Get a little more out of this one. Ah. Ah, this one's coming out messy. So that's about five tablespoons. Could be too much, could be not enough. I don't know. Now, even though it is citric acid because it's lemon juice, it's not clear like, you know, vinegar when I use it, it's very clear. Um, I've not used uh, citric acid powder. So I don't know if it would be cloudy like this, um, but this, because it's lemon juice, is cloudy. So and now I'm going to go ahead and mix in the dye. We're going to start with some golden yellow. I'm mean, using golden, uh, golden yellow, royal blue, and teal today, and I'm going to go ahead and mix them all in one bath, and then dip dye, and see how exactly it goes. Okay, this is a quarter teaspoon. This stuff likes to take a long time to dissolve. 
even in warm water. Let's see, it's a pretty nice little yellow color. We're probably not going to really get yellow from this since I'm putting blue in. Uh, we're more likely to get some green, but it also depends on how quickly the yarn takes up the different colors. And I'm going to clean off my spoon, my measuring spoon. Put in a quarter teaspoon of the teal. I do like this color. It's very pretty. And you can see already we're getting green because yellow and blue make green. And then last but not least, quarter teaspoon of the royal blue. If I remember correctly, this was the one that was the most cantankerous about um, mixing up when I did the Easter eggs, when, when Jasmine did the Easter eggs. And also the first time I ever used this stuff when I was doing some solar dyeing a couple of years ago. Um, this stuff, the royal blue just takes its own sweet time. Very nice, pretty green color. Sort of an emerald green. I thought I had it all stirred up, scraped the spoon across the bottom, and no, came up with some more gel. All right, that's looking good. All right, um, the first one, the first yarn that I'm going to try dipping in here is the two ply superwash sock. Now bear in mind, this has been soaked in plain tap water, but it doesn't have any acid in it. All of our acid is in our dye bath. So that will affect how this takes up yarn. And because I had dye on my fingers, I now already have dye on my yarn. That's okay. All right. In a little and take it out and a little more. And you can already see how the yarn at the top is a lot lighter than the yarn at the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and put that in there. And 
And I am just going to let this soak for a bit. Let that heat set it some. And then we'll come back and we'll do our second skein. Okay, so our yarn's been sitting for 20 minutes. Um, the crock pot was originally on high. I about halfway through turned it down to low. It was getting a little bit, a little bit too warm for my comfort. Um, it wasn't bubbling or anything, but I was starting to smell it. So, but now it is ready to come out so that we can do our next one. All right. This is warm. And I'm just gonna pull it out of here and I'm not gonna squeeze it or anything. I'm just gonna let the excess drain out. If I wasn't gonna be doing a second skein, then I'd just let it cool in the bath. Interesting. I'm going to guess that's where some of the blue didn't get all the way dissolved. Like I said, that royal blue likes to be cantankerous about that. Yep, you can see it on my hands. That's royal blue. But that's okay. It's an adventure. And that water is actually dripping off. It's actually draining clear. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it over here. And I'm gonna let this go ahead and cool to room temperature before I wash it. Because blues like to take some time before they set. And now, well, first I'm gonna show you. Take a look at our dye bath. You remember how green it was before? Well, now it's blue. Um, blue takes longer to strike to yarn than other colors. So the yellow and the blue went ahead and struck together. That yellow's all out of the bath now because it's already all struck to that first skein of yarn. So our second one is just gonna be blue. And I could add some more yellow in if I wanted to, um, but I don't feel like it. So I'm just gonna go ahead, put it in like this. I'm still gonna do the same dip dyeing technique that I did before. So that we get a gradient. And this is the Superwash Sport Merino, also from Dyer Supplier. Let's go ahead, put it in. Dip in a little, bring it out. And each time I'm going to let it go in just a little bit further. And I'm moving around like this so that the yarn that's um, more the inside of the skein also gets dye bath on it. Yeah, you can definitely see, I don't know if you can see that there, where there's some of that blue that did not dissolve. I am not going to worry about it. Although I will learn from my lesson, and next time I will probably mix up my dye in cups or something first. But all my mason jars are currently being washed. And that looks like it's starting to clear pretty good. I can start to actually see the crock pot through it.
Oh yeah, you can see it right down there. That great big blob right here. Yeah, the water's not hot, the crock pot is. Don't do this at home, kids. Be smarter than me. Yep, see there's that great big blob of that blue. I'm telling you, that royal blue, it is cranky when it comes to mixing. I'm just going to stir this up a bit, try to get that all dissolved in there, or at least better dissolved in there. Speckles can be fun, but yeah, I don't want a big old blotch of blue if I don't have to have it. Years ago, I probably would have been so upset and just mad and sad and everything about that. Um, but Chad has taught me to just let things go. And that's, that's why we always say it's an adventure because, you know, when thing, he started saying this way early on when we were first together. Um, and we've been together for 25 years, but he would say, you know, when something goes wrong, he'd say, hey, it's an adventure. So now when things go wrong, we just, we just say, it's an adventure. We don't worry about it. There are much worse things than unmixed up dye. Okay, now that I have mixed that in and we have new color and I have blue fingernails, you can tell how worried I am about that. I'm going to go ahead and re-dip dye this. Starting with just the first little bit first. And then gradually dipping a little more. And I'm hoping I still have enough acid in this bath for dip dyeing like this to actually work. If there's not enough acid in it, it won't. Um, and then when, you know, I put all of the yarn in there, um, the yarn won't want to take the dye and I'll have to add more acid in. We'll get more of a tonal. But that's okay. Tonals are nice too. This is actually kind of zen doing this. It's also a really good arm workout because wet yarn is heavy. Yeah, you can see, I can see that there's still more of that blue in there. Undissolved. And of course, it's not going to want to come out. Come back here. Oh my goodness, you know, there's a ton still in here, just not dissolved. And I am just going to go ahead and scoop out as much as I can. I'll do something with that later. Any minute. Bonus skein. Okay. Just, just mixing up, you know, the loose dye just a little bit. Okay. This is going to be a very interesting colorway. <laughs> if it works. Oh, 
Okay, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and just put it in there the rest of the way. Put it all, make sure it's all under the water. So that it's all getting color. And I'm gonna put the lid on it and let it sit for about 20, 30 minutes or so. Okay, so it's been 20 minutes that our yarn's been sitting here in our dye bath on low heat in the crock pot. And let's take a look at it. It's, the yarn's looking so pretty. I love that blue. We still have a little bit of color left in our dye bath. Not a lot, but still a little. And I'd like to see it exhaust all the way. So I'm gonna add a little bit more acid to this and let it go for just a little bit longer. Shake up my lemon juice. And I don't know how much acid was still left in this dye bath when I put this skein in, um, since it started out with that first skein, so. That's one. Two, three more tablespoons, or six half tablespoons. And I'm just gonna throw this around just a little, not too much, just a little. Just look at so pretty. Okay. Yeah, put that back in there. And let it go another 10, 15 minutes and see if we can get that last. I mean, you can already see it's already grabbing that blue already. I mean, it's significantly lighter just in those few seconds since I put it in. So let this go another 10, 15 minutes with that extra acid in there and see what we come out with. See if our dye bath exhausts. Okay, so our yarn's been in the yarn bath, in the dye bath for an extra 10 minutes um, with that extra three tablespoons of lemon juice. And let's take a look. Yeah, there's the, the faintest, faintest little bit of blue. I mean, if you're looking real hard, you can see just the faintest little bit of blue in there, but yeah, I'd, I'd call that pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this yarn out and put it over with our first skein, which is actually already dried. Yeah, you can see that's running off very clear. Okay, so a little bit extra water so it's not dripping all over the place. Fairly warm. It's just determined. It's like, no, 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 I've got more water in me. You can't take me away from this crock pot. No. All right, sassy yarn. I am the boss of you. Okay. And put it over here with our other yarn. Okay, so our yarn has cooled all the way down to room temperature. It's actually a little chilly. Um, and this, of course, over here, again, is our 
Dyer Supplier 2 ply superwash sock in fingering weight. Um, and this is our, I think I got that right, this is our Dyer Supplier Superwash Sport Merino in sport weight. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and wash them. I'm actually going to start with the blue one first, even though it was the second one that I dyed, um, because if you remember on our green skein, we've got those big clumps of dark here where we had the, the undissolved uh, royal blue dye in there. And so I want to try to not have, if that's going to have a lot of bleeding, I want to start with the one that I don't think is going to have as much bleeding um, as far as washing them goes, just because if I've got a lot of bleeding in this one, it's going to take me longer to do it. So let me move this out of the way and bring this over. And this might take a couple of times through and I might even need to, uh, we'll probably even need to add a little bit of dish soap in here. Ooh, this water is very cold. It's just straight tap water. But, yeah, I'm not seeing any bleeding on this one, which is good. Maybe a tiny, tiny little bit. I'm not agitating this too much. Not that I think it's going to felt because this is cold water, um, but I just don't want it to become a tangled mess. Because then I'd have to untangle it. So yeah, there doesn't seem to be a lot of bleeding in this one, which is good. I'm going to wait to the side and let's grab our green one. And see what happens with it. It's such a pretty green. Doesn't look to be any bleeding on this one either, but let me go get some dish soap and see how that goes. I mean, you can see there might be just, if I get a, might be just the faintest, faintest hint of blue in there, but probably not. But let me go get some dish soap and see if, uh, we get any bleeding with that because that can sometimes do it. Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of... Boom! Okay, so I'm just going to add a little bit of Dawn dish soap. Just a little bit. Just to make sure that there's no loose dye or anything in there. And I will, of course, be taking this um, to a faucet to rinse it out completely. I just want you to see if there's any bleeding in this. Does not seem to be any bleeding. What do y'all think? Oh, get a little bit of the dark blue from the undissolved 
die. So before I do the green one, sadly it says I'm doing a whole lot to get the blue off my fingers. That's okay. I'm used to having inky fingers from using fountain pens. A little bit of dye is not going to bother me too much either. So go ahead and try this. Yeah, I'm not seeing any bleeding. Oh, this looks like this dye is all set really good. Maybe a little bit of blue, but that could also be from the dawn. Um, because it's blue and I don't have any clear dish soap, unfortunately. All right, well, I'm gonna just um, give these a few more washes. Put the blue in here too since it doesn't look like anything's bleeding. I'm going to go ahead and wash this a few more times and then rinse it out. Um, then I will let it dry and we'll come back and take a look at what we got. Alright, so our yarn is dry and look how pretty this is. I've got them both skeined up. Um, over here on the left we have the Dyer Supplier Superwash Sport Merino in our blue. And on the right, we have the Dyer Supplier Two Ply Superwash Sock in our green. And I think they are gorgeous. We do have a couple of little issues though, especially here on this green one. If you look down here, this is where that clump of blue was. Now I'm gonna go ahead and unskein this or so that you can see a little bit better what I'm talking about. Down here, these dark patches, that's where that unmixed uh, royal blue gel was. And you can see we got some really, really dark spots here from it. We also got some interesting um, like copper colors in here too. And I don't know what exactly did some breaking there to cause that. I think that's a really interesting color, the copper. Um, and I think the blue is pretty too. It's a little bit dark on this skein though. And I'm not sure how this is gonna look when it's knit up. Um, if it was all the way across, it could be um, like peekaboo stripes. As it is now though, I don't know if it's going to really um, look like anything more than a mistake, which is what it is, you know. Um, over here on our other end, our lighter end, because we definitely did get a gradient here. You can see on our lighter end, we've got we've got some patches that barely look like there's any color at all. We've got some here that that's actually still just white right there. Um, got a few little areas that are just sort of a, a mottled blue, um, which matches our blue from this game, um, but it goes all the way down to a lighter green and then down to the dark, but it does in some areas have a very mottled color. It's not a really smooth gradient, um, which considering it was my first time dip dyeing a full skein of yarn, I don't think that turned out too bad. I mean, no one's perfect at anything the first time you try it. We all have to practice and practice and build that muscle memory um, to be good at things. So yeah, I got a gradient effect on my yarn. Maybe it's not a perfect gradient, but I don't think it looks too bad for the first time. Um, my bigger concern is these dark blue patches that came from the unmixed dye and the areas up here where we didn't get any color. Um, I don't know if this is because when I was holding it up with this tie for the dip dyeing, 
it pulled, and that's probably what happened, is it pulled this tie really tight. So we got some resist points here in the yarn, which I didn't want to get, which is why I use such a very, very large uh, piece of yarn for tying it. But, you know, in the course of dip dyeing it, all that weight of the yarn pulled it tight. So I'll have to come up with something else to use for holding it while I dip dye it. Now, what am I going to do with this yarn? I don't know because how it looks in a skein and even, you know, wound up, you can see looks a lot different just wound up like this from loose like this, which is going to look completely different when it's knitted. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to knit a swatch with this just to see how it turns out. I might end up loving it knitted up. Um, I might end up deciding I need to do something different with it. I don't know. We'll take a look at that once it is knitted up and I'll come back and show you a swatch of that when it is. But first, let's take a look at our Superwash Sport Merino. And, oh, I love this. We do have a couple of the little blue splotches here. They're not nearly as bad in the green because I noticed that unmixed up clump of the icing gel food coloring and got it out pretty quickly. But you can see, here, do this. We have no way. You can see, got a much, much smoother gradient on this one. Much smoother gradient from a very, very pale blue here, almost like a, an ice blue, down to a teal over here. And I think we ended up with a teal on this one as opposed to that royal blue color because that royal blue didn't uh, get mixed in. Um, but this is just such a smoother gradient, which shows you practice makes perfect. <laughs> um, we do have some a little bit of splotchiness here. Yes, I am my own worst critic, and I'm going to notice all of my flaws. Um, we've got a little bit of that blue splotching here. Um, and it even looks a little bit purple in places. So I don't know how that's going to look when it's knitted up either. Um, but for the most part, I just... Oh my God, I love this yarn. <laughs> I would buy this in a store. I love this color so much, the way this turned out, which is awesome. Um, but just like with the green, how it looks here loose in the skein looks different from how it looks when it's wound up. And that's going to look different from how it's going to look when it's knitted. So, I am going to knit a swatch of this one as well and see what I think of it. Here's what our yarn looks like knitted up in swatches. And I have to say, I love this. I, I honestly, I wasn't sure about the green when it was, you know, when it was done dyeing and, you know, I'm sure you picked up on that, but knit it up. Look at how beautifully that blends together. And when we get, you know, this, the little bits of white stripes through there and, and the blending with the darker green to the lighter green, um, you can see a little bit faintness of blue, but not very much. And those big blue splotches that are in here, right here, I've got some of those knitted in there and you can't even really tell. They just look like a darker green. Um, so it blends in really well. The blue, you know, I love the blue from the get-go once it came out of the dye bath. Um, and it just looks even better knitted up. I just, I love this color. It looks so fantastic. And the little um, splotches of blue that we got in this one from that undissolved uh, gel dye, they show up in here and they're more noticeable than they are in the green swatch, but they work perfectly fine because this is a blue colorway. So they're just like little pops of color. There is one right here where the color, that dark blue started to break. I mean, a little pink and purple in there, um, but it's, it's barely noticeable at all. Um, so yeah, this turned out great. Actually, I love these two colors together. Um, and I'm trying to 
figure out something that I could knit with the two of them together. I don't know, maybe a shawl or I, I don't think just something like socks because I have like way, way too much of this yarn for that. Um, uh, even with um, the amount of the yarn that I use for the swatches, I still probably have like 700 yards of this yarn left. So yeah, this could make a really nice shawl. I don't think it's quite enough for a sweater quantity, but I will come up with something to do with it. I absolutely love it. Uh, and yes, I'm going to keep these swatches um, to see, you know, down the road, how does my, my yarn dye look? Because I'm still a really new yarn dyer. I've only dyed maybe five or six skeins of yarn at this point. Um, so I'd like to see how I progress over time. Overall, I am really pleased with this and I think we definitely proved that yes, you can dye yarn with food coloring using lemon juice as your acid source. So I hope you had as much fun watching this as I had dyeing the yarn and talking about it. And now I'm going to go and hit Ravelry and spend probably the rest of my day looking through patterns, seeing what catches my eye that I think would look good with these two. So y'all have a great day and I will talk to you later and hope to see you on my next adventure. Bye!